What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. In this one, we are gonna take a look at and do a full walkthrough on my DIY garage golf sim build. And I'm gonna show you just how cheap you can build one for as well. So stay tuned, you're not gonna wanna miss this one. I think you're gonna be extremely surprised with just how cheap we can get this done for. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so starting off with arguably the most important part of any golf simulator, that is gonna be your launch monitor. Now there are tons on the market to choose from, so hopefully I'll be able to do some more videos with different launch monitors or give you a full review and my thoughts of what I went with, which is the FlightScope Mevo Plus with the Pro package. Uh, that gives you a bunch of extra awesome things. Um, honestly, my stuff is identical to Trackman, which is a lot more money again save that for another video but uh this is going to set you back eighteen hundred dollars and then you have the optional add-on of eight hundred dollars for the pro package so we'll start a tally up on the screen of how much this simulator cost me and we'll total it all up at the end so let's move into the next thing which is going to be our screen I would say the second most important thing of any good golf simulator is going to be your hitting screen or your hitting net. So for me, this screen here was actually quote unquote free because it was a warranty return from a different golf sim project years ago. So it is too big for this space. I have a 16 foot by 10 foot tall uh, screen. So that's why you're going to see a lot of the wrinkles down below and kind of in the middle. I don't have it fully secured because we need to be able to access behind the screen. I've got tires and wheels and some storage back there. So it could look a little nicer, but it definitely gets the job done. This screen for me when I first bought it was $400. Like I said, this one was a warranty replacement. So I guess you could call it free. You could get something as simple as a hitting net for probably a hundred bucks and you could dial it in all the way up to a very fancy hitting screen for a projector to show a really nice image on it, which could be a thousand dollars or even more. So uh, that's one of the things that can vary a lot. But what I went with was I have a uh, four inch pocket at the top. There is a pocket at the bottom as well, which holds conduit so that when you hit balls into it, the bottom of the screen isn't flippity flapping everywhere. Got some grommets along the sides as well uh, to just kind of tie eye hooks into them to keep everything snug. Uh, now I'll grab the camera and show you just how we hung it at the top. All right, so hopefully you can see uh, what I've got going on here, but basically at the top of my screen up there, I've got an eye hook uh, put into the stud of my wall. From that eye hook, I have the little carabiner, whatchamacallit, and that sends an aircraft cable all the way along the top of my screen, which is through the pocket at the top. That's what hangs it. I could have gone with something that probably secured the screen a little bit tighter, but aircraft cable was super cheap and I could do it all myself. So that's what I went with. All right, and then moving over to the other side of the screen here. So you can see I've got a black screen in behind the white screen. So this white screen is the impact screen. It's made of whatever mesh. Uh, my projector image kind of goes through it. So that's why we went with the black screen behind it, just so the image looks as good as it can with a basic projector and screen. So this black screen can be picked up on Amazon. I think it was like $25. It's meant for photographer photo shoot things where they lay that big sheet Anyway, we'll put the total right there. Uh, and then kind of moving over, like I said, at the other end, uh, I've got that same eye hook. And I don't know what those things are called. I think they're, they're not a carabiner. I don't know. If I find the name, we'll put it up. But you know what they are. So the biggest waste of money in the golf simulator build uh, to date was absolutely the moving blankets that I used to protect the ceiling. Uh, I guess I underestimated the ball speed of pretty much any club, even if you top a golf ball, which one of my friends did, it put a hole in that moving blanket, which sucked because that total came to about $180. And that was the hardest part of the entire sim project to build was stapling all that together. So that really sucks. I can imagine you can probably see all the holes in that moving blanket, which translated to holes in the ceiling. So skip that, but if it's in a room that you care about, um, just, you kind of have to figure it out, get like some foam padding, uh, insulation, that sort of stuff. 
Moving back from non-important stuff into very important things, uh, our hitting mat. So that is a crucial element of your garage or whatever golf sim build because you want a real feel. Uh, when your irons hit the grass, you want to feel like you're actually taking a divot. And in your feet, you want to feel like you're on real grass. So I lucked out my local course, uh, Tobiano uh, Golf, hooked me up big time with this hitting mat. So this is a 14 foot section uh, of their old driving range hitting mat. So a T can go straight into that, even though I am a huge proponent of uh, T-claw. So I always use T-claw anyway, but T's can go straight into this thing. It feels real. Um, honestly, extremely good product. I have no idea where they get it from. There's tons of stuff on the internet that you can find for your hitting mats. Uh, they gave me a skookum deal on this thing. I was only paying 130 bucks or $120 for this. So uh, definitely lucked out with that because I know these things can get expensive. Um, I've seen them anywhere like okay hitting mats from I, I'd say $300 on the low end to all the way up to like $1,000 if you want something super big. So we'll put my total of even call it high as call it $150. We'll put that total right there. I'm currently standing on and behind me is going to be the rest of my turf. This just completes the look. So when a ball hits the screen and it lands, it's not landing on a cement floor. Uh, it totally depends on your simulator. If you have a carpeted basement that you're putting this in, you don't need this at all. If it's cement, you still technically don't need it. It just looks good. This thing was on Amazon for $200. It was a 14 foot by 20 something feet section so it was a bit longer than i actually needed but there was no seams it was all one piece it matches nice it looks good uh so i went with it so the projector another very important piece of most garage golf sim builds now depending on the size and space of your sim you might not even use a projector you might just have the flight scope or whatever launch monitor you choose to go with and your ipad or your iphone or whatever that shows you that data and you hit into a net guys like bust the jack golf on youtube and tiktok are huge and that's all they do they have a retractable net uh, and their flight scope they hit into that and uh, there you go. So for me, I had enough room to hang a projector. I also had this projector uh, from like 10 years ago and it was sitting in a closet. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna repurpose it. I bought an HDMI cable, ran it to a splitter to go into my iPad and it was just that simple. So thought it was a no brainer since we already had a leftover screen. So free screen, free projector. I thought, why not? So for me, the projector was zero dollars. Now, for you, if you don't currently have a projector, you can get a really solid one on Amazon or anywhere like Best Buys and whatever for around $500. So we'll put that up there. Uh, but you can run away with it all the way up to thousands of dollars, depending on how fancy of a build you want to go with. All right. So we've talked about the projector. We've talked about the screen, the hitting mat, the flight scope. Uh, let's talk about all the nitty gritty little things. So like the hardware, the operating system, all of that stuff. Let's get into it. Okay, so in terms of hardware, electronics, and stuff to make everything work, it is honestly extremely simple. Uh, I had luckily some outlets right there, so we plugged a couple extension cords into those, ran them along the slat wall here behind me. One of the extension cords goes just straight into a charger so that my iPad can stay 100% all the time. It has a splitter in it that goes from the iPad charger to an HDMI adapter. So then we run an HDMI cable from my iPad to the projector. So we have my iPad that's charged all the time and always running the screen to the projector. So we'll grab the phone and show you how I ran everything. So like I said, we got the extension cords that run along the slat wall there. iPad that has that splitter. So that has the HDMI cable that goes around and it goes up that giant piece of wood there across that beam and then right into our projector mount and down. So it's all wire tucked. It all looks super clean, tidy and out of the way. And I never have to adjust any settings. It's always just flick the iPad on and we are ready to go. So let's tally up the hardware on a retail level. It is around $200 for me on a bunch of the stuff I already had. I paid a whopping $100. Uh, so yeah, adding that to the total, we were $100 in hardware, 
$1,800 in the FlightScope Mevo Plus, $800 in the Pro Software, $150 in my Hitting Turf from Tobiano Golf. Uh, and I can't remember, it was either $150 or $200 from Amazon for the turf behind me there. Uh, I'll put up whichever the correct amount is right there after I look at the receipt. Uh, free hitting screen, free projector, because I already had that. Had a bunch of the hardware, had the iPad. Uh, so quick math, this entire golf sim build was sub $3,000 to put together. In my opinion, that is unbeatable value. To give me all of the same numbers that a Trackman will give me and in the comfort of my own garage, it is phenomenal. Um, the local businesses that have the, the simulators, they're, they're six figure builds per sim. So like the fact that this is 3%, the cost of that is absolutely crazy. But uh, you guys can let me know down in the comments. How do you think I did? Would you do this same thing if it cost you three grand? Um, let me know down below. Let me know what I missed. Let me know what you would add to this simulator. Thanks for tuning on in. Make sure you hit that like, hit the subscribe. It does mean a lot. I wanna pump a bit more content over the winter with the simulator all set up now. Uh, and a big shout out and thanks to Dealax Golf. Go check out dealax.com. Uh, use code Mike15 for 15% off. At the time of filming this, I still have this dirty mustache from Movember. So it is right at the end of November. I'm gonna try and edit this as quick as I can to get this live because you can combine those discounts. So use code Mike15 uh, for an additional 15% off. Anything that's on their site, they have awesome polos, Q-zips, vests, hoodies, a ton of stuff. It's honestly really shockingly good quality for how inexpensive their product is. So go check out uh, dealax.com, pick yourself up something nice, get something for Christmas for the family, the friends. Uh, and like I said, smash that like button. Let me know what you think of the simulator build. Until next time, have a good one, folks.